What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Daily Psalm, where every day we're going through one of the psalms. Here we are on day 44 for the third time. Hallelujah. Psalm 44. For the choir director, a mascal of the sons of Korah. Our God, or O oh God, we have heard with our ears. Our fathers have told us the work that you did in their days, in the days of old. You with your own hand drove out the nations. Then you planted them. So God refers to us as plants. As uh, his crops. And this is speaking about in uh, the land of Canaan. God drove out the nations and planted the land of Israel there. Or the people of Israel there. The nation. You with your own hand and... Uh, his hand is also referring to the Son of God. His hand or his arm. You with your own hand drove out the nations. Then you planted them. You afflicted the peoples. Then you spread them abroad. So he drove out the nations from the land of Canaan. He planted the land of Israel there, or the people of Israel there. Then he afflicted them because of their disobedience. And then it says, then you spread them abroad. That's how he scattered, that's speaking of him uh, scattering them. Scattering the northern kingdom of Israel through the Assyrians. And uh, the southern kingdom of Judah was taken into the Babylonian captivity and brought back into the land. But in 70 AD, they were scattered as well. But we see in 1948, they were brought back. But the northern kingdom of Israel hasn't been brought back yet. Israel hasn't been made whole again. It's only the southern kingdom of Judah that's who's in the land now. And uh, we as believers are considered uh, the northern house of Israel. You are my king, O God. Command victories for Jacob. Through you we will push back our adversaries. Hallelujah. Through your name we will trample down those who rise up against us. Hallelujah. For I will not trust in my bow, nor will my sword save me. But you have saved us from our adversaries, and you have put to shame those who hate us. See, we can have weapons, and there's nothing wrong with ha having weapons. Contrary to what some people may believe, it's just a tool. But it's not the weapons that are, that are going to save us, especially... In this world that we're living in, our our enemies are powerful. And Satan could have, if it wasn't for God, Satan could send a whole army against us. A whole, he could sick everyone on us. And we wouldn't make it. But he can only do what God allows. And God protects us. And even if it was a whole army coming against us, David said, even if ten thousands come against me, I will not fear. Because it's all in God's hands. God made 185,000 Assyrians drop dead in one night. The whole Assyrian army just dropped dead. It's all in his hands. We could, we could be surrounded by an army and they would only be able to touch us if God allowed it, allowed it. For I will not trust in my bow, nor will my sword save me. But you have saved us from our adversaries and you have put to shame those who hate us. In God we have boasted all day long. Hallelujah. And we will give thanks to your name forever. Selah. Yet you have rejected us and brought us to dishonor and do not go out with our armies. You cause us to turn back from the adversary and those who hate us have taken spoil for themselves. You have given us a sheep to be eaten and have scattered us among the nations. 
you sell your people cheaply and have not profited by their sale. And this is because of disobedience. The people of Israel didn't truly follow God. They didn't truly trust in him and truly serve him. There were there was some good, but a lot uh, bad. A lot of people were disobedient and truly didn't seek after God and follow him. Let us not be like that. Let's truly seek God and follow him with all our heart. You make us a reproach to our neighbors. A scoffing and a derision to those around us. You make us a byword among the nations. A laughing stock among the peoples. All day long my dishonor is before me. And my humiliation has overwhelmed me. Because of the voice of him who reproaches and reviles. Because of the presence of the enemy and the avenger. But all this has come upon us. All this has come upon us. But we have not forgotten you. We have not dealt falsely with your covenant. Our heart has not turned back. Our steps have not deviated from your way. Yet you have crushed us in a place of jackals and covered us with the shadow of death. And we see in the book of Job that it's not always the case that those who are obedient to God have a good life. A lot of a lot of the time, we know a lot of the time it's the case that those who are disobedient to God, the wicked, have a good life. The wicked have have money and are successful. And and the and the uh, people of God struggle. And this is another thing that we also see in the seven churches with the Church of Smyrna. God said, uh, Jesus said more specifically, I know you're. I know your uh, tribulation and your poverty, but you are rich. I know those who blaspheme and say they are Jews, but they are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. He said, do not fear what you are about to suffer. The devil will cast some of you into prison and you will have tribulation for 10 days. Endure up until death. And receive the crown of life. Hallelujah. But God. God knows what he's doing. God uh, is going to work everything out in the end. And if we continue to seek him and serve him. He's going to. I mean he does provide for us. But he's going to bring us into his kingdom. And give us more than we ever wanted or asked for. If we had forgotten the name of our God or extended our hands to a strange God, would God not find this out? For he knows the secrets of the heart. But for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. And this is what Paul quoted here in Romans chapter 8. I'm going to start in verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is with us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all. How will, he, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is, is he who died, yes, rather who was raised, who was at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Just as it is written, for your sake we are being put to death all day long. We were considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor th things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah.
but for your sake we are killed all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Arouse yourself. Why do you sleep, O Lord? Awake. Do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face and forget our affliction and our oppression? For our soul has sunk down into the dust. Our body cleaves to the earth. Rise up. Be our help. Also redeem us for the sake of your loving kindness. And he will. Hallelujah. He will redeem us. We're his possession. And we are bought with a price that wasn't cheap. The blood of Christ. The blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. And we don't deserve what he did for us. Not at all. But God is gracious. God provides. God loves us. And he wants to save us. No matter what we have to go through, we have to overcome. We have to endure. And we have to keep our hope in God, keep trusting in God, no matter what. And he's going to deliver us. He's going to bring us into his kingdom in the end. Hallelujah. Let's overcome. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Let's make sure we have a pure heart. Take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Let's do his will in everything. Let's walk in all his ways and serve him with all our heart. Let's be ready. The end is near. We need to be ready. We need to be right with him. Let's overcome. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, call out to him today. We're living in the last days. There's not much time left. The punishment for sin is death. Everyone's going to stand before God in judgment one day. And anyone who hasn't had their sins forgiven is going to be thrown into the lake of fire for the second death, the body and soul. God requires perfection in order to live eternally and be with him in his presence. And none of us can earn it. None of us are perfect or can be perfect. And that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptations just like us, but lived a perfect life. He did nothing wrong. And although he was perfect and didn't deserve to die, he died for us. He hung on a cross for us so that through him we receive forgiveness of sins. He paid the debt for our sins. He paid the penalty for our sins, for, for the sins of all mankind, if they will just accept the free gift. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later, and you call out to him to forgive you, to save you, to change you, he will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit, which will lead you, which will give you wisdom and understanding. He'll forgive you. He'll give you the Holy Spirit. And he'll give you eternal life. The Bible says we can't even imagine the things that God has prepared for those who love him. It's uh, going to be incredible. It's, it's, can't even imagine it. Give your life to Jesus Christ today. We're living in the last days. Repent and believe the gospel. The word repent means to have a change of heart or a change of mind. It means to truly turn to God. So make that to make that decision to turn to God, to give your life to Him. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus Christ today. There's not much time left. Thank you guys for tuning in. That's the end of Psalm 44. Love you guys. Shalom.